Douglas here again. You um, haven't seen much of me for a couple of weeks. Um, Malcolm's been doing a good job of putting up his um, leatherwork videos. I did have approximately five hours of video working on the, uh, the posty race bike. Um, and due to a little bit of um, miscommunication between myself and the, uh, the GoPro, um, that video was lost. So um, Malcolm's had to step into the breach and uh, fill the void, but um, um, I think we've got our communications between myself and the GoPro a, a little bit better now, and hopefully that won't happen again. I'm sure um, all of you have uh, at some stage experienced the, uh, the disaster of, of losing several hours of video. So today we've got um, a friend's bike, that uh, we're going to do some diagnosing on and hopefully some fixing on and uh, well let's get started okay the um, the story with this bike is that um, it belongs to an old gentleman um, he was having trouble getting it going I, I'm not top, quite sure of its whole full history uh, apparently it hadn't been started in a few years um, he dabbled with it and um, decided it didn't have enough compression. So um, he had the head off, um, sent it away and had the head rebuild and, it, um, and then put it back together and it still wouldn't start. So he did a little bit of diagnostics and uh, he couldn't work out what what was wrong um, so the bikes ended up here with me to have a look at um, we first thing I checked was the the carby and the carby was in an absolute mess full of varnish and dirt and and it was never going to work so um, I swapped um, a brand new car beyond, um, checked the spark, and there was still no sign of life. Um, it, it felt low on compression to kick over. We attempted to start it. There was no sign of starting. Gave it a, a little snifter of error start, still no sign of starting. Uh, and then because I didn't really know the gentleman who owned the bike and know his workmanship um, and because I was a little bit suspicious because when I looked at the head studs I don't know if you can see one of them is protruding out far too far which may be that it's starting to pull out of the crankcase or unscrewing from the crankcase and this top one isn't sticking out far enough so there's something weird going on there um, I've, I checked the timing um, the valve timing and it, it's all right so um, it's come back to my place and uh, we're gonna pull the head off and, and have a look at what's what's going on oh the other thing I, I tried when I saw the bolts is I uh, stuck my tension wrench on and they had practically no tension on them it was as though they'd just been done up hand tight and left so um, today we're going to pull the pull the head off and see what what we find and um, because that studs one studs low and the others high I probably will have to pull the barrel off too to have a look at the studs going into the the, the crankcase so that's today's project Well, I've got the bike on the scissor lift and securely tied down, so um, we can now get it up at a decent working height. As I get older and older, the bikes have to come up to me. I can't bend down any further, so that'll probably do us.
Okay. I'll take the little cover off the rope and that's all. Bit of a juggling act here. One loose. Oh, see, that's where I mean one of his bolts was. Super tight, the other one is super loose. And you see how easily the engine's turning over. There's next to no compression. The valve gap has been checked. Okay. Right. Probably would have been easier if I'd got uh, the 10 mil socket and the short extension, but I like doing things the difficult way. You know, the truth of the matter is I'm too lazy. I've got to walk into the workshop to the big toolbox to get that. You might wonder why I'm not working in the workshop on one of the bike. Um, bike lifts it's because both bike lifts in the workshop I have my projects on right now and this has come out of the blue Have a look at this cam. It's pretty good. Mind you, someone's had a what looks like a pair of parrot no jaws on. On this surface here. All right, we'll put that up on the on the bench out of harm's way and wrap it in a rag. I like to at this point um, uh, 
I mean, a lot of people will say, oh, I'll make sure the engine's on top dead centre when you start. Well, yes, you should. But I would prefer to recheck the timing when I'm finished. And a little bit of time now cap capturing this over smaller fingers makes the process quicker when I'm putting it back together. You'll see what I mean when I get to the other end of this project. <coughs> So what I've done now is um, I've cable tied the sprocket onto the chain so that the same teeth stay, in, stay engaged with the sprocket. And as long as you don't let the chain get super slack and slide the tooth on the other end, it'll speed up putting the thing back together. All right, next is the um, oh, get the right spanner, Douglas, and you might be able to do it. Next, we'll what has he used on there? He hasn't used standard size nuts. Okay, I'll be back in a second. The, um, the nuts he's got on here aren't the right nuts anyway. There should be two dome nuts and two flat nuts. Two dome nuts should be there and there. And... Um, the flat nuts there and there they should have a washer under each there's no washer under that one there's a washer under and that one is actually a shoulder nut so I don't know where he's got his bits and pieces from um, but let's um, That one was super loose. That one's about right. That one's about right. Once I've got the pressure off um, off the nuts, I'm not worried about the zigzag pattern for undoing them again because the pressure's off the head. I'll have to find some proper nuts to put this back on. Uh, or ask him, has he got the ones he took off? should never have a nut, nut directly down on an aluminium case or piece. There should always be a washer. It uh, tends to gall the aluminium if... Um, you might leave that in place as he's used a new gasket the engines never run with it so it should be right
tabby off. Gonna get my daily exercise, walking backwards and forwards to the toolbox. If I'm um, working in the workshop, the big toolbox is alongside the ramps. So um, it's easy. I, I virtually turn around on the spot and I've got everything I want. But working outside, I've had to bring the, the race toolbox outside. Look. And although it's not far away, it's just on the other side of the bike, but um, I've got to walk around to get all the bits and pieces. Hello. Hi. Whoops, careful. Douglas. Yeah, that's a me. There you are. Thank you. Bloody air horn is a bit of a nuisance. He looks like he's done a pretty nice job, whoever did the head. Um, I um, I'll probably um do the kerosene, kerosene test to chest, test the head, but um, we'll do that in a minute. Well, this is interesting. And this is possibly all of our problems. The engine hasn't actually started since the head was put back on. So therefore it's had no running but this gasket has seen some running but most importantly these are crush gaskets they're a, a multi multi-layer gasket and they have a little indent I don't know if you can can see it's probably pretty hard in this light but there's a little indent around the bore. There's a little indent around the chain case. And most importantly, very hard to see, two of these studs that hold the head on are actually oilways. And they have a little dent around them too. And the idea is that when you put the head on and you tighten it down to the 18 foot pounds, that these little raised sections crush down and ensure the seal. Um, he's used a gasket that's been used before. You can't reuse crush gaskets. So. I've got to go further to find out what's going on with these stud links that are not right. You saw I struggled, that long stud struggled to get the, um, the head off. Um, but at the very least, we're going to need a new head gasket before this can go back together. So, what I'm going to do now 
is everything's got a different pressure on it. So, you know, it obviously doesn't use a torque wrench, but he also doesn't have a good judge of consistent pressure with his wrist. Um, with these little engines, it's, you know, you don't have to torque every single bolt on them, but you've, when you work on them for a while, you can get a feel of what's what's right and what's wrong. Um, it's like this one is a bit hard to drive out. I, I hope it's just because he's got some gasket goo or something stuck down in the threads, but. Now, I'm not going to drive those all the way off at this stage because I do want... I don't know if you can see, but um, the top of the, the piston is a bit galled. So, it probably means that I'm going to have to take the, the barrel right off. So now the, that means the barrel does have to come off. Ah, that's why she's playing hard to get off. We've got water and sludge has leaked down. Where's my 10 mil gone? There it is. There's a little washer on this pivot bolt for the chain guide. A uh, little aluminium one. Sometimes it sticks on here and if, you, if you're not looking for it, you lose it. And I have worked on engines that have had that washer missing. Um, that chain guide needs replacing. Um, when they're new, they're, they're a flat surface and they have a spine along the middle and you can see that this one's well worn the um, the side plates on the chain have cut into the flat surface and the spine through the middle has been eroded down uh, by the rollers so that needs replacing The barrel doesn't look in too bad a shape, but as I glance at the piston, it's had it. That piston has completely had it. That galling goes down to the top ring gland. Uh, both compression rings are jammed in. The skirt of the piston is torn to pieces. I'm surprised that the bore looks so good considering the state of this piston. So um, the parts required is mounting up.
Well, that, um, that piston's going to have to come off of there now. Hmm. Douglas is going to have to go around the other side of the bike. Gudgeon is um, seized in the piston, so that's going to be I know you're all saying why aren't you using a brass screw? I'm not particularly worried now if the gudgeon has grabbed hold of the skirts of the piston it'll mean a new gudgeon pin and a new piston so rather than take the long walk into the garage you know, at least 15 paces I'll um, that piston's got fairly hot um, Mm, we may have to apply some heat to this. She's well and truly stuck in that piston. If the little end's gone, on the rod. Oh, I don't want to know. Yeah, we're going to have to heat her up somewhat. The boss has come to check out what I'm doing. Am I doing the right job? Am I doing it correctly? Have a look at the bits I've taken off and see if I've done everything correctly. Actually, I think it's time we went and had some lunch, don't you? Do you want to go for lunch? Go for lunch? Yes. Okay, we're off for lunch. We're going to um, heat the piston with... Uh, a good old heat gun and uh, see if we can't loosen that um, gudgeon in the piston. I really don't like being that brutal on the rod but uh, that gudgeon had to come out. Um, what I was using is um, my 10mm um, fast brace to get it off. Uh, it's a perfect size for the gudgeon. Um, <coughs> Let's have a look at that gudgeon, it will be hot.
I don't know if you can uh, see properly, but um, the gudgeon has seized in the piston. Um, what can I point with this? The gudgeon has seized in the piston and there's a great tear in the surface of the gudgeon. So, uh, one gudgeon that's US. Uh, fingers crossed that the, the little end of the rod is still okay. This will still be quite on the warm side. Now, I don't know if you can see in in the little end that the little end bearing is torn up too. So it's a, almost at a point where a replacement motor and send this one out for or do a complete rebuild on it. Um, I'm going to have to get back to the owner and uh, find out what he wants to do. While well, waiting for the owner well, to decide what he wants to do with this motor, um, I've decided to carry on with the um, checking the head and cleaning that dirty carby. Okay, we're going to um, test the head. Now, what I'm testing for here is um, good seating of the valves. I'm assuming that this head is. Um, may have had the valves cut and then lapped or just lapped but it's important that we have seal on the valves so what I'm going to do is firstly we will level the head and I have a a wedge here that I use for that just move my carby bits so that I don't disturb them all. I'll turn around so you can see what's going on. Okay, so that's that's level enough for our purposes. Now I'll fight with the kerosene container to get the lid off. Child proof and old people proof lids that they put on stuff now. It says squeeze cap and turn. Well I can't squeeze it any more than I am. Okay. So now without dribbling everywhere we want to fill that with kerosene and I normally leave them overnight but um, it's hopeful that we might get this back together today so I'll leave that sit there and uh, not disturb it Um, I usually put a couple of drops of food colour in the kerosene as well. Then, when it leaks out, the next thing is to know where it's leaked out. And you can look in the ports and there's normally a trail uh, with food colour that shows you which valve is actually leaking. But... Uh, I didn't do that today. This is one of the um, <laughs> the dirtiest and muckiest posty bike carbies that I've taken off. Most of that is um, shellac out of the fuel. I've got the, um, 
ultrasonic cleaner warming up. So um, I'll um, get this car be ready to put in the cleaner. Okay, so um, let's get this um, this um, carby into bits, ready to clean. Take the pin out for the float. The float and the needle. And as I expected, the varnish has well, the main didn't actually come out the motion tube came out but we'll put it in like that and perhaps it will come out later this will be the tougher one into aluminium oh no it's not it's Coming out, you can see the I don't know if you can, but the crystallized varnish on the the sides of the the carby body. Sorry about the uh, noise in the background, it's the um, ultrasonic cleaner warming up. Just debating whether I pull the tap off and, and check inside that. I often don't take the taps off. Um, they they're better not disturbed if you can, but as this one had so much junk in it. And not knowing anything about the history of this bike doesn't help either, so... Uh, oh yeah, it's just as... just as well we took it off, it's... Um, got its fair share of varnish in there. Let's see if I can save the o-ring and not put that in the, the ultrasonic cleaner. There's a big, big flakes of congealed jelly-like fuel and varnish. We'll take off this debris filter and sediment trap. If uh, if the rest of the car be crap, this should be the same. There's a. I don't know if you can see in this light, but there's a fair bit of gunk in there and. Uh, 
and uh, that is so you can uh, you can peel uh, the rubbish off. And once again, we have an O-ring that I will pull out and put to one side. There's great swaths of so I just aid the the job of the ultrasound cleaner so by breaking through the the crust of the the varnish and crap and see what we can do. So, look at all this rubbish. It'll probably need um, a couple of goes through in the ultrasonic cleaner um, with another little light scrape in the areas where, that hasn't cleaned off um, to, uh, to totally clean it. Now there is another o-ring around the bowl I'm going to leave that one in situ um, I don't have a, a, a carby kit here and these tend to grow badly if you take them out so um, we'll leave that one on for its journey through the ultra sound cleaner ready for the basket I'll have a look at this one just get the lights great to get most of the In a way, it's fortunate that um, he put new fuel in the bike and tried to start it. The new fuel has um, turned the varnish back to a sticky paste, um, which is going to make it easier to come off in the ultrasound cleaner. I won't get too carried away scraping it because I'm figuring I'm going to have to put it through a couple of times and give it a little scrape in between and stub and bits. So the first time through is just sort of indicating where the areas where it's really gunked up. Okay, into the basket you go. Now, for all the little bits, I've got my proprietary John West tuna tin with holes drilled in the bottom. Holes big enough to let the fluid through, but not big enough to let any of the tiny parts. Yeah. There's no um, no seeing through these these jets at this stage.
Yeah, all the jets are, are well and truly blocked. Leave the needle out of the um, for the float out. We'll just give this a good scraping off. Okay. There's something in the bottom of the ultrasound cleaner. Little rubber corners <sighs> so um you're probably out of camera shot there but um there's the ultrasound cleaner and um We'll leave those those bits to um, to stew away, and um, I'll be back at you when they're finished. Well, Douglas here. Um, the outcome on that bike wasn't good. The uh, the owner decided that the uh, the damage was too great. I think it was the damage on the little end of the conrod, which I said would. You know should really be replaced he's decided to go looking for another motor for it so we may see that bike back again we may not but uh, that's as far as we're going to go with um, trying to get it going um, <laughs> obviously the engine had run out of oil the um, little end um, on the Conrad had seized and the gudgeon was seized tight causing the piston to be biased one way and scraping down the barrel i'm absolutely at, amazed that the barrel survived all of that and all the damage was taken on the the piston itself so um, we don't win them all and uh, i won't say this is uh, a loss we just didn't come out with a running bike at the end of it. So uh, catch you later.